Hello and welcome to Library Drawing Party. Today we're going to be drawing this beautiful pony. In order to get started with our horse, the first thing we want to do is draw general shapes so we can place our head, body, tail, and legs. I want the head to go about here. I'm going to draw an oval. Then I want the body first part to go here, second part to go about here, tail can go over here, that tail's looking a little low, so let's move it up, it should be about the same as the head, so I'm going to actually move the head down a bit, that's why it's good to place this first because you can make adjustments more easily. And then we want our legs. Okay, once you have a general idea of where you want things to go, let's clean this up a bit. And then let's start with the white marking. So, it's like an hourglass shape. which comes down and goes around the nose. So let's draw the half circles for the nose. And then there's a line connecting them. And then there's another line with a couple of dots underneath it. Draw a circle around, fill it in. And let's adjust the marking. And let's put the eyes in. Don't put the full force of the pencil down just yet because we might need to adjust the eyes. Okay, then we'll do the sides of the head. There's a shadow going through here, and then there's some shadows above the eyes. We'll do the ears next, Let's curve up a bit.
Okay, and then let's draw the hair. And then he has some hair coming down, and then some hair going up, blowing in the wind. We got lots of different directions here. Okay, once we establish the head, then we'll go in and work on the rest of the body. So the mane comes down the first half of the body. Then we have the body extending out a bit. Comes out about here. And then we'll go down. So this pony or horse has a lot of muscle. We want to make sure we include the muscle. This might look like one leg, but this is the back leg here and this is the front leg. So we want to include notations so that you know you're looking at two legs just right next to each other. And put in some of the shadow. We don't need to put all of it in yet, but this way we can help determine where those muscle lines would go. Okay, then we'll do the back leg. Well, let's do the belly first. This comes up pretty far. The belly has some curved lines so we can leave some of that from before. And we did our initial circles. I'll we'll take some of it away though. Alright, then we have our back leg. And other back leg. Add some more muscle here. It's looking a little skinny. Pull the belly up a bit. If you have a favorite pony at home or horse picture, you can use these same techniques to draw your favorite horse.
And then we want the tail. The tail's got a lot of squiggly lines. Okay, once you have your horse outlined, then you can go in and start to add some color. So the horse is primarily light brown. So I'm gonna use light brown as my base coat. The horses have short hair for the body. So we don't need to draw the long strokes like we were doing with the puppy. You can just go in and fill it in like this. And it's okay if you see some of the white because it gives it some texture. This creates the illusion of short hair without having to draw every single hair. Now once you did your light brown base coat, you can take your dark brown color and start to go in and add our shading. So I'm going to start with the eyes because the eyes are the darkest part. So I'm going to use the full force of the pencil here. I'm also going to use the full force of the pencil for the nose. This also helps draw the viewer's attention to the face, which is the most important part of the horse. You can t tell the horse's motions. Okay, next I'm going to do the ear. Then I'm going to do the hair. I don't want to do all of the hair because I do want the hair to have a lighter brown color in it, but I will add some shading to help show the lines. Same thing with the tail. I'll put in some squiggly lines for the tail and some straighter lines. Give it some movement. And then we can go in and add some shading. Like lightly applying dark brown to the spots that we were adding shading with our number two pencil. This helps keep the horse from looking flat or one dimensional. Okay, next step is we're going to take, so I have two light browns here. I have a tan light brown and a more reddish light brown. I'm going to use the reddish light brown for some more 
shading in the places that we did with our dark brown. I'm just going to go over those again and start to fade this color out into the body. Make it blend a little bit better without losing our strokes. I'm going to also use the tan color for some highlights. Then I'm going to use the tannish light brown and give it a second coat. Start to blend all these colors together and make it a little bit more uniform. When we're blending, we still want to keep some of that texture. We don't want to blend it so much that it's super smooth because this shows the hair. For the hair, I'm going to take some more of that reddish brown, add some more long strokes in that. I'm going to add some of that to the tail. Add a little highlight to the tail. And a little bit more dark brown. Add a little bit more highlight to the body. And a little bit darker tone on the bottom. Okay, once you're happy with your horse, then you can start to work on the background. So for the background, let's start with the water. So I used a light blue, which comes in the bottom of the face. And goes underneath the body. And out to the other side. And then it kind of dips down here. We have a little patch of grass.
And then there's a little bit of water at the top of the head. Okay, now for the grass, we are going to want to show the long strokes. So similar to stippling, we're going to be doing lots of long grasses. We all want them to be going the same general direction. And that's going to fill in the rest of the landscape. Okay, once you have your base coat of grass down, then we can start filling in some of that patch with the sand color. With some highlights of sand color above to and let's take our teal blue and add some movement to the water. Let's take our dark blue, add some shadows. You can also use watercolors for this too. We've been trying watercolors with some of our previous drawings. If you like that technique, you can try that here too. You might want to use the pencil for the grass so you get those nice long strokes. But you can always do a base coat of green and then add the green pencil strokes afterwards. And then when I take some more of this teal blue, it's starting to blend in a little bit better. Because for the water, we do want this to be pretty smooth. We want it to be a nice, peaceful scene. And it can go into the grass a bit because the water would lapping against the grass. And just one more coat of the light blue. Really get it nice and smooth. Okay, once it's nice and smooth, let's take some purple and add some purple grass in between. This could be like flowers. You want to see these strokes too. You want nice big strokes. You can add some purple throughout. It also helps keep it in the cool color scheme for the background. Let's add some more green 
You can do some parts darker, help emphasize different blades of grass. And then finally we'll put some blades of grass in the water. Put some purple flower blades in the water too. And there you have it. That's our horse. Thank you for joining us. We hope to see you at more library drawing parties. We have them every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And keep being creative.